It is now my high honor and great privilege to present the President of the United States. Senator Jackson, my old colleague, and Senator Magnuson, Governor Rosalini, Stuart Udall, Ted Morse, Congressman Ullman, Chet Hollifield, Commissioner, ladies and gentlemen. This is an extraordinary place to visit as a citizen and as President of the United States because along this river, men have played a significant role in the last 20 years which has changed the entire history of the world. And therefore, to come all the way from Washington and see this river and see these reactors and recognize their significance in the closing days of the Second World War and also the role that the men and women who work here have played in the years since the Second World War in maintaining the strength of the United States I am here today and express my appreciation to you. The atomic age is a dreadful age, but we must realize that when we broke the atom apart and released its energy and changed the history of the world, no one can say what the future will bring. No one can speak with certainty about whether we shall be able to control this deadly weapon whether we shall be able to maintain our life and our peaceful relations with other countries. I can assure you we do everything we can. It is for that reason that I so strongly support it, recognizing as I did its limitations, but as a step, as Senator Magnus said, Medic Magnuson said on the long road to peace, that I strongly supported the test ban treaty. But no one can say now, can say what will come of all that effort or indeed of the whole atomic age. It may well be that man recognizes now that war is so destructive, so annihilating, so incendiary that it may be possible out of that awful fact, it may be possible for us step by step to so adjust our relations, to so develop a rule of reason and a rule of law that we may, out of this uh, scientific change, it may be possible for us to find a more peaceful world. That is our intention. But I want you to know that the effort that you have made and invested, the talents which have been at work here, I think on several occasions, have contributed to the security of the United States and in a very large sense to the peace of the world. I'm also glad he'd come here today because we begin work on the largest nuclear power reactor for peaceful purposes in the world. And I take the greatest satisfaction in the United States being second to none. And I think this is a good area where we should be first. And we are first. We are first. It's extraordinary how long it took. It's extraordinary what energy, human energy, was required to get this concept accepted. But as Scoop Jackson said, just as it took a decade to get the Grand Coulee, which of all the extraordinary national assets I've seen in the last two days is the most extraordinary, because it not only led to the prosperity of this valley, but led to what has been happening here for 20 years and now leads to this new breakthrough from that action, which took a decade to accomplish and which will pay for itself many times over and in a sense already has, we have some idea of how important it is that these fights be won. And this fight was won by the dedicated work of the members of this state, work in the Senate, the Congress, and most of all, I think, by the local people. 
who, when the Congress failed to meet its complete responsibility, took up the slack. And therefore, this is a partnership in a very real sense between the national government and the local community for the benefit of our country. I come from Massachusetts. I come uh, from uh, the other side of the country, but it's a very small country, and I take the greatest pride in what we're all doing here. I wonder how many people uh, who are sitting here today were born in the state of Washington. Would you hold up your hands? Excluding the children. And now everybody who wasn't born in this state? Well, you see that uh, that's an important point. When we develop these resources in the Northwest United States, it's just as well that the country realizes that we're not talking about one state or two states or three states. We're talking about the United States. Our people move freely from east to west and even once in a while from west to east. But in any case, the country becomes stronger. There's an old saying that a rising tide lifts all the boats. And as the Northwest United States rises, so does the entire country. So with that. So Governor Rosalini, Owen Hurd, Glenn Lee, Don Pudnetti, and the others, I want to tell you that you have fulfilled your responsibilities as citizens, and I think that uh, this is going to be an extraordinary development. And I look forward to coming back here sometime and seeing uh, this at work, because what you are able to do here, I think, can be done around the world. So we're going to show them the way. One of the... There are two points on conservation that have come home to me in the last two days. One is the necessity for us to protect what we already have, what nature gave to us, and use it well, not to waste water or land. Set aside land and water, recreation, wilderness, and all the rest now, so it will be available to those who come in the future. That is the traditional concept of conservation, and it still has a major part in the national life of the United States. But the other part of conservation is the newer part. And that is to use science and technology to achieve significant breakthroughs as we are doing today, and in that way to conserve the resources, which 10 or 20 or 30 years ago may have been wholly unknown. So we use nuclear power for peaceful purposes and power. We use new techniques to develop new kinds of coal and oil from shale and all the rest. We use new techniques, as Senator Magnuson has pioneered, in oceanography. So from the bottom of the ocean and from the ocean, we get all the resources which are there and are going to be mined and harvested. And from the sun, we're going to find more and more uses for that energy whose power we're so conscious of today. All this means that we put science to work. Science to work in improving our environment and making this country a better place in which to live. So I want us to stay ahead. You know that in the next 10 years, I hope the people of the United States realize it, that we double the need for electric power every 10 years. We need the equivalent of a new Grand Coulee Dam every 60 days. In the next 20 years, we're going to have to put in the electric industry $125 billion of investment. And when we do that, this country will be richer, and our children will enjoy a higher standard of living. We don't realize that what we regarded as affluence 30 years ago is now way down below. Air conditioning, television, electricity, and all the rest have changed the life of this country, and we're going to find the same extraordinary changes in the next 20 or 30 years. And I think we must do several things. First, we must maintain an aggressive program to use our hydro resources to the fullest. Every drop of water which goes to the ocean without being used for power or used to grow or being made available on the widest possible base is a waste. And I hope that we will do everything we can to make sure that nothing runs to the ocean unused and wasted. And secondly, <laughs> secondly, we can meet our electric power goals by developing new means of making our vast resources of coal more competitive in the generation of electricity. Coal is an old fuel, but we're going to find new techniques for using it. 
which is going to make it one of the most advanced of all human fuel. And third, as is well known here at Hanford, we must hasten the development of low-cost atomic power. I think we should lead the world in this. By 1967, 68, 1970, in the Northeast United States, where power rates are nearly double yours, we're going to find atomic power increasingly competitive. And by the end of this century, this is going to be a tremendous source. Our ex experts estimate that half of all electric energy generated in the United States will come from nuclear sources. And fourth, we must construct efficient interconnections between electric systems, public and private, both within regions, as you've done so effectively here in the Northwest, and between regions, as has been proposed by means of a Pacific Northwest, Pacific Southwest intertie. Maybe we can give some of it to California. <laughs> Finally, we must not allow this technology to lead to monopolization, either by the federal government or by large combines of private utilities. We should realize the economies of size without jeopardizing the rights of our citizens to be served by the type of electric utility they prefer and also to encourage competition. These are the things we must do and many more. This great rich country of ours has a long unfinished agenda, but it's always had that agenda in creative times. And this is a creative time in our country and throughout the world. All of the trained and educated men and women who are making our country over, who are building a better standard of living for our people, this is a time when we wish to encourage that release of energy, human energy, which is the most extraordinary of all. And therefore, I'm proud to come here across the United States as president to express our thanks to you, to express my pride in what is being begun here today, which puts the United States, as I said, once more in the lead in a whole new area which can mean so much to people around the world. And I think it's very appropriate that we come here where so much has been done to build the military strength of the United States and to find a chance to strike a blow for peace and to find a chance to strike a blow for a better life for our fellow citizens. This is a great national asset here. I can assure you it will be maintained. And from the work we begin today, I hope the light will spread out, not merely to those who are served by electricity, but to all the world to realize that here in the United States, we're moving ahead and providing security for our people and also a hope for a better life in this most beautiful country of ours. Thank you. to introduce Dr. Gerald Tape at this time, who will take over now. Mr. President, I think it is indeed fitting that the breaking of ground for this particular power facility should be initiated through the use of the atom. We have a wand here, a pointer for your use, which in this particular case has on its tip a piece of uranium from the first reactor placed at Hanford many, many years ago. We have before you a counter, which I hope you will be able to hear a certain amount of the background clicking from the normal radiation which is present in the atmosphere, cosmic rays and so on. If you will take this one, Mr. President, and approach the counter, we will hope to initiate the action of the crane on your left. Yes, at this time. Great, a pleasure to do this.
Thank you, President Kennedy, for coming to be with us here today. Thank you. These people, this day, found the efforts of many people over many years. Perhaps no one can sum it up better than one of the men whose energies were never spared in making it all possible. 